everyone, I'm Nate Ortiz, and this is Walking in Power. So we're gonna be looking at the book of Proverbs. I understand in the agency, right, you guys like to read through the book of Proverbs. So I just wanna take uh, some key verses from each chapter and kind of take a little bit of a deeper dive in it and bring some context around each chapter. So obviously much can be said about the whole book, but we're just gonna dive right in and we're gonna be starting in chapter one in the book of Proverbs walking in wisdom. So some things I want you to know about the book of Proverbs. It was written by a man named Solomon. Some of you may or may not know that, but Solomon was the son of King David. King David, the one who took down Goliath, who was the shepherd boy. Solomon is King David's son. And there's some unique things, some key things I want you to know about this. So King David, he was responsible to build the temple, but there came a point where God said, you know, Dave, you're not going to build a temple. You're not going to finish it, right? Your son is, and that was going to be Solomon. And so it's, it's a unique storyline that we see there, but that's a key point that I want you to understand. The second thing is when God told Solomon, um, that he would give him anything. Solomon asked for wisdom. I think that's a, a great thing to understand that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived and that his wisdom transcends um, just even to this day, to 2022, that we are reading these words and they're speaking life to us. And the third thing is the purpose of Proverbs is to teach wisdom and discipline to ourselves that in turn impacts generations. So when we read the book of Proverbs, you'll see many times that there is, you know, a, a you know, father talking to his son or, or referring to like his mother and just talking about it in that context, right? Because there's something about the wisdom and the discipline that we have for ourselves that impacts people around us, that goes down generations. So sometimes we think about it, um, you know, generational wealth, right? That's not just money, but different things. And, and sometimes you think about generational curses, right? We've heard that. So generational curses, right? There are things that that we lack discipline in, that we are afraid to change, that we aren't really gaining wisdom on it, so we just pass it on to the next generation. So I wanna focus on just three thoughts here. When we are walking in wisdom, what it will look like. So wisdom isn't just thinking smarter or just being the wisest person in the room, but wisdom is much more than that. So when you're walking in wisdom, it will look like generation transformation when we are seeing true change in our lives, right? Mind, body, spirit. When we understand, right, that our that our relationship with the Bible, with God, when we read the word, it's not just reading a book and saying, wow, that was some good leadership principles. The Bible's far more, far more uh, deep than just a, a, a leadership book, right? There's great leadership principles, but it's about spiritual transformation, right? It's about transforming your spirit. It's about renewing your mind. It's about get, you know, understanding your body and keeping it healthy as it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when we think about this, uh, the first thing is generation transformation. When you're walking in wisdom, there is a generation transformation that takes place. So what I mean by that is, you know, if you have seen people where you, know, you pick up the mannerisms of the people you hang with most, right? So if you have kids and you're around other people, sometimes people will look at your kids. They'll look at you and say, man, you have this of your mom or you have this of your dad or you have these characteristics, right? In the same way, our children, right? We may not see it, but they're going to pick up things that we do, the way we act, the way we talk, the way we handle people, the way we treat people, how we pursue God, right? So they're, they're going to see that. And it takes wisdom to understand that when we read the word and when we apply it to our lives, it's going to impact the people who are closest to us. So what is the purpose of wisdom and discipline if it stops with us, all right? So we just can't gain wisdom or have discipline because these are good principles to impact our lives. Absolutely. But we have to be able to transfer that to our kids or to family members or to people that we work very closely with. And so I believe that the only way to initiate uh, transformation is obedience to the standard. So when I say obedience to the standard, what I mean is if you read the word of God and you're reading through and, and you're reading uh, text upon text, you know, the, whether it's the Ten Commandments or whether it's something else, there is a standard that is being set. There's a standard that you read and you have to decide, am I going to live up to this standard or am I going to stay where I am and that space in between the standard and where I am? I'll just fill that with excuses or I'll fill that why I, you know, I'm not going to meet that standard. It's too high. It feels impossible. Or it's not that big of a deal. But I, I would encourage you that you would say, what can I do and what can God do to help me to get to that standard, right? God's never going to lower his standard uh, just to make us feel better. 
right? We want to say, God, I know I'm not perfect, right? That's why I need a savior. That's why I need you in my life to help me get there. So in, in our lives, when we are impacting generations, right? When I think about good fathers, good mothers, um, good leaders, it's people say, I have obedience to the standard that I may not feel like holding to the standard. I may want to de deviate from the standard, but I want to live my life holy and pleasing unto God. So I want to be obedient to the standard because it's it will speak volumes to the people around you, right? So people, when they when they see you uh, in private or in public, they're gonna say, that's the same person because they have obedience to the standard. Not just when you're filming something on Instagram, not when people are around, but even when you are by yourself, God knows what you're doing. So have an obedience to the standard. And so there's this quote that says, what, what, what one generation does in moderation, the next will do in excess. So whatever you're doing in your life, that the space of where you are and where the standard is, Right, and if you want to say generation transformation, you have to understand that what you do in moderation. Say, well, hey, it's not that big of a deal. It's like you know, who cares? I'm not as bad as this person. I'm not as bad as that person. You have to understand that the generation after you is going to do it in excess. So walking in wisdom is generation transformation, and having that in your mind. The second thing is, uh, it brings understanding. Walking in wisdom brings understanding. Albert Einstein said this: that any fool could know, but the point is to understand. So many people can say, oh, I know God, or I've been to church, or I know how church goes, or I know all those things. And many people can know lots of different things. But is there this understanding that you say, I have read this, I know it, but now I want to understand it in a deeper way that it impacts my life. And so with that you know, mindset of, of having that in, in our, our forefront, that we are saying, you know, I just don't want to say I know of God, but I truly want to know him personally. Right? We live in the day of social media where you can follow people's um, Instagram, social media, TikTok, and you can learn things about them. You can know so much about them. But you know, even if you're following sports, or you can know a lot about a, a person, their stats, you know, where they went to school at, where their hometown is, all those things. But you don't know that person uh, in a you know, personal way. And so in the same way when it comes to God, there has to be this element saying, I read the word, I know it, but I want it to bring understanding to my life. And that's what wisdom does. It brings understanding to the tough things in your lives, the things you don't understand, the things that seem just difficult to really grab a hold of. Uh, wisdom that only God gives can help you in those times. So whenever you're struggling, whenever you're having a hard time, don't just rely on your own um, experiences or you know, what, what you've been told, but saying, you know, what does the word of God said? What does it say about walking in this wisdom as you go through Proverbs? You're gonna see or different things that may be hard for you and say, man, that's a really hard thing to walk out. But you have to understand that this word is meant to transform you, not just meant to make you feel like you can uh, just feel better about your situation. So be aware of that, that walking wisdom brings understanding. Wisdom is not just knowing how, but also why. So we know how to do things, but we also have to know the why, right? So if we operate in unforgiveness, if we operate in bitterness, if we don't operate in love and, and care for people, um, that's that's not that's not wisdom. We choose in our own ways instead of the ways of God. So we wanna be mindful of wisdom is just not knowing the how to do something, but the why and why we do it. And we believe that when we do that, it brings a greater understanding to ourselves and to other people when we are honoring people, when we are respecting people, uh, even when they're doing wrong by us, we choose to say, I know what God's word says, and I'm continuing to um, live in that place of trusting him and following his word. And the third thing, when we talk about walking in wisdom, uh, when you walk in wisdom, that's when you really receive wisdom and discipline. So I always say this, choose your heart. In life, when you are thinking about different things you've had to face, different obstacles and challenges, you have to understand that there are always things that are gonna come against you. And the things that come against you are not are sometimes meant to take you under, right? They, they seem like you can't bounce back from, but you have to keep your eyes on God. You have to keep your focus in on Him because that's truly where our strength comes from, that's where our joy comes from, and that's where our understanding comes from, and most important, that's where our wisdom comes from. There's times where you're not gonna have enough wisdom or experience or money to handle the things that are in front of you, where you really have to rely on God. You have to say, God, this is beyond my scope of understanding. This is beyond my scope of reason. And I can't even wrestle this down to the ground, but I'm trusting you to give me wisdom and discipline for this moment. And so when you, uh, when you think about uh, the wisdom and discipline, you will never ever be able to change past your threshold of pain. 
So sometimes when we ask God for wisdom and we want the discipline to do these things, it's hard, it's difficult. And the moment we feel that pain or that un it gets uncomfortable or it gets awkward, or whatever that might be, we have to be able to push even past those moments because we will never change. If every time we feel uncomfortable, every time we feel that pressure or that it's it's hard, and we pull back when it comes to our faith, we're never going to change. We're never going to grow fully to what God has called us to be. And so in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32 and 33, it says this. I want to close with this thought. It says, for simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. But all who listen to me will live in peace, uncontrolled by fear or harm. Listen, in life, things don't become easier, but you become stronger when you strengthen yourself in the Lord. So walk in wisdom. When you read these Proverbs, understand that it is going to help you in so many different ways. It's going to help the people around you in generation transformation. That years you know, after, you got, after you're gone, whatever that looks like, you want to hope that you made a deposit in the people around you. They say, man... I remember what this person did for me and it impacted me greatly, and I want to hand it on to someone else. Walking in wisdom, it's going to bring understanding to your life. It's going to help you have the greater understanding in every situation that you're just not operating uh, just from the hip. You're not just operating on just what you know, but you're operating in God given wisdom. And the third thing, it, you know, when you walk in wisdom, it, you will receive wisdom and discipline, right? So you want those two, wisdom and discipline in your life so you can withstand the difficult things in life, the moments where you are feeling overwhelmed or you feel like you don't have a way out or an answer. Pray for God to give you wisdom and our God who is gracious will give it to you. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in for this Walking in Power. I will see you next time.